Hello and welcome to DFS Coach Talk. Today is Sunday, April the 17th. It is Easter Sunday, so happy Easter to everyone out there. We have so much to unpack today, especially in the fact that we have the one and only Deb Lutz back <laughs> from sunning, as we put, we said it right on the air, so I'm not going to dodge it. You are sunning your buns down in Mexico. <laughs> That's right. I can't show that, but uh, <laughs> how was the trip? Amazing. It's, yeah. Um, yeah. Every time we go to Mexico, people down there are fantastic. And you're right. Nothing but pure sunshine, but no oh. DFS. So that was, that was painful this past week. I bet you. Yeah. That's yeah. But now that you're zoned in, you know, sometimes you take a, a couple of days right. off or a week off and then you're like, all right, zoned in. So that's right. We are going to pick your brain for this NBA four game slate. Awesome playoffs, you know, all day, one o'clock. The first game starts, the last game starts at nine. We've got some close spreads. We've got some a decent equal uh, total. So it, it really opens up a lot of picks for us. We also have this designation that, that Zion Williams looks like he's going to play. Crazy. So we have, we have to figure out if that's a ploy to screw up the Phoenix prep or is Zion really going to play out there? That's, that's the interesting part. Um, I did watch him in warmups uh, just yesterday. I believe it was where they were showing him windmill dunking. So it's not like he's not getting up there. So we'll see how that flies. They're showcasing him. Wow. Yeah. That'll be interesting. Gonna, it is going to be, it's going to be awesome. All right, well, let's uh, let's dive right into this. We're going to keep it uh, keep it on target here. We're going to get through everything so that we can uh, get everybody ready for that early lock. If you're playing the four game main slate, we want to get that out there uh, so everybody has a chance to listen. Then it's not too long that it's going to overwhelm anybody. Uh, our presenting sponsor for this uh, podcast is by in, in the Prize Picks. PrizePicks.com is where you want to go. Sign up with the promo code Coach Talk. If it's your first deposit, they will match a dollar for a dollar all the way up to a hundred bucks. If you want to join us, DFS Coach Talk, you get everything we've got: lineups, uh, cores, basketball, baseball, golf, everything that's uh, going. We're we're posting and following very close closely. So just go to DFSCoachTalk.com. You can sign up for as little as three days for ten bucks and check us out. Now that Deb's back. We expect just a huge group of people to dive back in. There were people that said, I'm leaving if Deb's not there. So, <laughs> so now we got them Bring all back. back. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Here we go, Deb. Let's get after this. Um, game one. It's the Atlanta Hawks at the Miami Heat. Miami's favored by six and a half. It's a 219 and a half total, which is the lowest total of the four. Uh, 106 point uh, and a half for Atlanta implied, 113 implied for the Miami Heat. Designations here, important, especially for Atlanta. We have John Collins is questionable. And I he said that in the press yesterday that he was going to give it a try and play. So even though he's listed as questionable, I have him listed as in. But if you know, if he tweaks something a little bit there, he could, you know, be limited. So we really have to be concerned, I think, with Collins. I don't believe for me that he's playable because I can't see him logging monster minutes here. The The big loss, though, was that uh, yucky knee injury for Mr. Capella in the last game. He's out and the veteran Lou Williams is out. A um, little bit less dicey for Miami. Um, not sure why these guys are even listed because they're going to play Tyler Hero, very likely to play PJ Tucker and Gabe Vincent, uh, likely to pay, play. They're probable. The only three guys that are listed as questionable really aren't going to get in the game anyway. More than likely, that's Deadman, Highsmith, and Morris. Yeah, Deadman would play some backup center. I get it, but don't think those guys are, are going to have much of an impact there. If it does, Anything with Deadman doesn't play, it would give just a few minute boost, maybe to Bam, and make him even a stronger play. So again, this is the lowest of the four games, but just to put it in perspective, Deb, 
The four lines uh, totals are 219 and a half in this game, 224 Brooklyn, Boston, 229 and a half Chicago, Milwaukee, and 224 the Pelicans and Suns. So it's only a 10 point spread from the lowest to the highest, the other two right in between. So it's not going to be one of those circle this game, you can't avoid it, you know, 240 totals or a 206 total like we saw the other day. You know, everybody's in play here, I think. So let's uh, let's look at one last, last thing, and then I want you to break this game down for us. During the regular season, Atlanta and Miami did not play at a fast pace, and people, for some reason, always mistake Atlanta for playing fast, but they don't. They're 19th, Miami's 29th from the regular season, second slowest in the league. And then defensively, we know Atlanta's really struggled. 26, which is surprising they're in this playoff run when, when we're looking at you know that type of a defensive rating. And Miami's fifth, so we know they can get it done. One point I wanted to tell you, too, it goes to show you, people that say defense isn't important or wins in the playoffs, the four teams that are hosting games today are fifth, second, 14th, and third in defense. Yep. So you have three of the top five defensive efficient teams hosting games. So defense does matter and very tough to advance in the playoffs without it. So that is the main story here. And I'll let you break it down with Capella out and we don't know what we're going to get with Collins. Uh, how are you looking at this initial breakdown, Deb? Yeah, I'm uh, you know, it's not the biggest spread on the slate. I actually think it's the second smallest spread, but right. the Heat are rested and healthy, um, and I think they win pretty easily here. Okay. Um, I think they are, you know, they they were the number one seed with a lot of rested players, and, uh, you know, I think they, um, they're they going to take on this uh, this shaky Hawks defense, and I think they're going to play their game and, uh, and come out strong. So I, you know, I think that um, – you probably have a little bit of chalkiness amongst some of the, the Miami players as a result of that, particularly with the Capella injury. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll take that into consideration. But I I like um, I like several players in this game. Um, Lowry uh, stands out to me as a first pick. Um, he's 6K on DK, 6,700 on FanDuel. I think he's been saving it up for the playoffs. If you think about how they've used him all year. Um, right. I think he, he's rested. Um, and against... Um, against a, a shaky Trey Young defense, I think he brings it here. So mm -hmm. I like uh, I like him a lot um, on this slate, particularly on DK at that price. Yeah. And then with Capella out, I have to imagine Adebayo is going to be really highly owned. Um, he also is priced very fairly, 8K on DK, yeah. 300 on FanDuel. You know, it's not a, <clears throat> it's not a heavy center slate. So I think um, there's going to be a decent amount of ownership on him, but it may just be too enticing to stay away. He's definitely one of my key centers that I'm looking at today. Um, yeah. And then, you know, given the low score of the game, I don't want to spend a lot more money um, on any one side of the ball. Butler is definitely a solid play at his pricing. He he can always, um, you know, go off and deliver that value. But the forward position is pretty loaded on this slate, so he's not going to be a top option for me tonight. Okay. You know, uh, for me, this this is interesting. I, I didn't understand the six and a half point spread. I, I really thought it would be like nine. Yeah. So I'm generally not that far off. So Vegas feels like Atlanta can hang here. So mm -hmm. uh, not sure why that is, but, you know, it's hard to argue with Vegas, but I, I tend to feel more like you do. I know Miami didn't finish red hot or anything, but they just seem like so much the better team, they're rested, uh, they have their rotation. I, I just think Miami's going to be solid here. So I'm, you know, there's two games that are 10 and a half point spread. So that I get mm -hmm. that that's a concern. And the fact that this one's only six and a half, you would think would be, uh, you know, a, a much more, uh, you know, pleasing game to choose from. But I just, I agree with you in the sense, I think Miami handles it pretty well. But I think there's some values here that I can't pass up. Kyle Lowry, like you said, at 6K is just too cheap. I mean, it's that simple. I mean, it's almost $4,000 right. <clears throat> cheaper than yeah. Trey Young. I mean, when you're yeah. talking yeah. about something like yeah. that, that's nuts. And then I agree, Bam, Bam Adebayo here is underpriced at 8K. You know, 
the impact of losing Clint Capella, he was a top five defensive real plus minus player in the league, not by just centers, top five overall. And I didn't realize he was still that effective defensively. I got to be yeah. honest. I thought, I thought he stepped back a little bit this year, but not on defense. So you take him out of there, they're yes. either going to go small and play uh, John Collins at center, you know, and, and keep Gallinari in the lineup. That's one option. Or they're just going to uh, play Collins at the four and promote a Kongu to the starting center. So we'll have that news. It's the first game. It may be coming out as we're doing this podcast. But if a Kongu starts at 5-1, I like him. I, I just think statistically he's been every good bit as good in uh, points per minute uh, fantasy-wise as, as Capella. And mm -hmm. so I think he would become uh, a very good option. So I could easily use my center and – uh, you know, power forward spots with uh, Adebayo and Okongwu here and feel pretty good about it. Because like yeah. you said, we don't have a joker. We don't have an Embiid. Right. So, you know, you can you can take some shots with those centers. I particularly so like I, Okongwu if Colin sits as well, because then you really have no interior presence. Oh, gosh, yeah. yeah. So I did want to mention, I didn't, I didn't um, finish off the Atlanta piece. Oh, so I'm sorry. Just okay. no, no, that's okay. So I just want to give my my Atlanta plays because um, there's a couple that I really like. I happen to love Bogdanovich in this spot. Okay. Um, he's going to benefit from a little bit less defense on the second team, um, and Atlanta is definitely going to need his offense. Um, and at 5600 on DK in particular, that's that's a fantastic price. He's been he's been really solid. They've been relying on him a lot for offense. And then I also like Herter at 4,700. He's been playing very consistently. I think um, on this slate, you're going to need, you know, a couple of guys in that, you know, 45 to, to 5K range. And I think he fits that bill uh, nicely and he'll he'll uh, um, he'll get the minutes. And I think if you think about uh, Miami's defense, maybe the shooting guard position is, you know, one of the, the lighter positions on D. So um, that's right. Go Atlanta. Sorry about that. I just wanted to kind of add those in. No, no, no problem at all. And. There's definitely a lot of value in this game. You know, when you look at Herter at 4-7, Gallinari at 4-9, you know, Bogdanovich at 5-6, and then the other side, Struess at 4-2, Duncan Robinson 4-K, P.J. Tucker 3-3. Again, not the sexiest of plays, but if you want to stack up, those are guys that are going to get minutes, yeah. and, uh, you know, sometimes minutes do equal money in DFS. So a lot of good plays in this game. I'm not going to stack it though because I'm afraid Miami handles it and we lose, uh, you know, a little minutes from some guys. Again, I'm not projecting a complete blowout. I just think that Miami's the stronger team here. But I, you know, I like the bigs. I'm sticking with, you know, I, I do think Adebayo and Okongwu mm -hmm. are, are are good plays. I agree with you. At Lowry's too cheap, and if you need one other value guy from this game, I don't think it's the worst play by any stretch. Cool. All right, game two, 3.30 p.m. Eastern. It's the Brooklyn Nets and Boston Celtics. Boston's only favored by four and a half at home. It's the lowest spread on the on the board. Uh, 224 tied for the second highest. 109.75 implied for Brooklyn. 114.25 implied for the Boston Celtics. Um, Brooklyn, only uh, Ben Simmons listed. He is out, but should be coming back here, it looks, pretty soon. And then for Boston, we know uh, Jawan Morgan is probable, more than likely won't get in. But the, their big loss is Robert Williams. You know, lo losing him, uh, we'll see if he can get back. Or, I mean, I'm not sure if he's out for the whole playoffs or what the deal is, but he's definitely out for this game. So this will be a little bit more interesting as far as a lot of people, <clears throat> you know, with, with both Kyrie and KD playing have switched on to this Brooklyn bandwagon, even though they're uh, yeah, an eight seed. Is that right? Uh, something seven seed, I think is what they are. Seven seed. So Boston finished second and they, their prize is they get to play uh, <laughs> of Irving and Durant uh, nets. Uh, statistically. <laughs> yeah. Statistically Brooklyn 10th in pace. We know Boston plays control. 24th, 15th for Brooklyn. They got in the middle of the pack defensively. 
second for Boston, and they were first most of the second half of the season. They have been a shutdown defense. However, they've got two superstars to try to stop now in Irving and Durant. I will say a couple of things that I were, would impress me when looking and, and you know really breaking down the defense of real plus minus is another guy that I didn't give enough credit to as far as his level of play. You know, I felt Al Horford, he's older now. I thought he really is stepping back. And again, DRPM is not the perfect stat, but he still was a top 10 DRPM player in the entire league. So guarding that four spot and a little bit of five, he still got it. And I don't know if that is going to affect, uh, you know, the play on KD or not. But uh, let's see how this one plays out. It's interesting. What, what's your take? Yeah, so I think it's going to be a real interesting game. I mean, the Celtics have actually dominated the Nets during the regular season. Um, but, you know, playoff time, you cannot count out uh, Durant or Kyrie. No. Um, I think uh, there's a couple of plays I like here. Um, you know, smart on Boston seems like a real value at 5,500 on DK. Um, Irving's D and the, the Nets back uh, backcourt D is not known to be too strong. So I think that's a, a real nice play there. He's since smarts taken over the point guard position, he's really ramped up his game. He's yeah. dishing out assists and, and staying involved. So um, I think that's a, uh, um, a fairly safe, safe play in, in some senses on this slate. Um, you know, Brown's now up to 9,100 on DK, um, 8,100 on FanDuel is not bad, but I, I prefer Tatum overall in this game. I really like Tatum a lot here. Um, he's played well against the Nets. I think he's been playing well towards the end of the season, kind of finding his groove. He's at 10K on uh, DK and 9,500 on FanDuel. Bruce Brown's going to, or uh, Jalen Brown is going to get Bruce Brown defense. Um, and I think that's going to be a little tougher on him. So, I really like um, Tatum here a lot. He's actually going to be, I think, my favorite player, my favorite pay-up player on the entire slate. Wow. So going away from a Durant, Giannis, et cetera. Um, so I'm really eyeing him. I think he gets a little bit owner, lower ownership versus some of the other guys. Um, and uh, and that's what I like on, on the Boston side. You know, on the Brooklyn side <clears> – <throat> I don't know if this is going to be a little contrarian to, uh, you know, to the rest of the field, but I'm going to take a pass on Durant and Kyrie. Um, okay. I think they, um, they're they both pretty highly priced. I don't think the Boston defense is being taken enough into consideration on their pricing. So I don't, I don't expect to see an unusually big game from either one of them. I think they'll be fairly controlled by the, by the defense um, with that number one D of the Celtics. So right. um, I'm going to stay away from them um, on this slate. Um, the only guy I'm really eyeing on um, Brooklyn is, is Drummond. Also thinking maybe a little bit of a contrarian play. Um, we talked about how there aren't that many great center options. A lot of people are going to go to Adebayo or potentially a Kongu if, if uh, you know, because if he starts. If he starts um, yeah. So Drummond, I think at, at 6,200 on DK, 6,100 on FanDuel, I think is yeah. a very fair price. Um, I do think they're, they're going to be missing Robert Williams in the center. You know, Tice is a good defender, but, um, but he doesn't have um, the size of Drummond. So I think they may find Drummond and he may get a lot of those rebounds and, uh, you know, other things that his stocks that he uh, that he does well at. So I'm, I'm I'm looking at him. Interesting. And and definitely some some good takes there, some contrarian takes, too. That this game could be the difference maker for you based on on some of that stuff, for sure. Um, I you know, it, this is a hard one. I, I personally I think Brooklyn can win this game outright. And I, so Celtics fans are upset with me. But you know what? <laughs> They're plus 148 to win the game outright. It's a four and a half spread. I just, you know, I think the Nets are, are serious contenders. I think they're going to go pretty far. Kyrie and Durant, you know, people say, well, blah, blah, blah. You know what? They both won championships, multiple championships for Durant. They understand what it takes to get it done in the playoffs. And yes, Boston's defense has been terrific. I get that. They're a good, strong defensive team, but they're not the same team, as you pointed out very astutely there, without Robert Williams. He's a, a top-notch interior defender, 
And it's not like they have a bunch of bigs. You know, after Tice, you know, they can play Horford at the five. They have a hugely undersized Grant Williams. You know, it's just, I don't, I'm not sure they can handle the inside out play of the Brooklyn team. It's mm. This is certainly a bummer of a matchup for Boston or Boston fans to have to play Brooklyn in the first round of the playoffs when it's, to me, a pretty even series. That's yeah. just the way I see it. I agree with you that Drummond is solid, but I think Claxton is solid as well. So that's the problem for me. Drummond at 6'2 and Claxton at 4'6, I think they're going to split it pretty much almost 24-24 or close mm -hmm. to it. So that just really makes it difficult for me to, to you know, ratchet one of those guys up there. Um, you know, maybe it's 26, 22, Drummond. I don't know. Plus, there's always the possibility of Drummond getting in foul trouble. So I'm not going to go there. I do think, though, that KD, even though I mentioned that statistic about Al Horford, he's going to be needed to be in the paint, getting rebounds and bodying up people, or Boston's going to get hurt on the glass. So KD, I know he's 10-8. It's a big price. Uh, it, you know, it seems like a difficult price to, pl to pay. It's the second highest to Giannis on the slate. But I really like KD. I just think this is, you know, his time. I think that they can do super well against Boston. Uh, and I think KD is the catalyst there. And I think it stays close enough that he is pretty assured of getting a deep run in minutes. And we've seen him in the playoffs. They play that dude 40 some minutes. I mean, you yeah. know, he's old. He doesn't look <laughs> like he's old. Yeah. So I'm mean, KD's a big, I really like him. Um, you know, and I, I don't believe you can gamble and take KD and Kyrie, just too much negative correlation of, of two guys. Pretty much have to make the decision there. It's with Kyrie, though, you know, Marcus Smart in that backcourt defense. Not that they can stop Kyrie by any stretch. He's He has stung them in the past. And it's that narrative. You know, Kyrie, they'll be booing the daylights out of him in Boston. <laughs> right. Unfortunately, Kyrie's one of those guys, though, that feeds off of that. He's, you know, so I'm I'm afraid of Kyrie. I may have a GPP where I go with Kyrie other than Durant. So we're on opposite ends of the spectrum here. Uh, you're fading those guys. I really like those guys today. So we'll see how that pans out. I like that um, sometimes. Give some good options for our viewers. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> And then for Boston, you know, I just I'd love to play Jalen Brown if he was cheaper. He'd be, I think he's a nice play, but man, did they move the price up on him? And Tatum's super expensive too. So I unfortunately I'm probably going to be the guy that fades the big stars from the Boston side. So yeah. <laughs> we're really going to be uh on opposite sides. I do think 5.5 is too cheap for Marcus Smart, though. Yeah, I mean, he's a great value, you know, just like Lowry is for the Heat. And then, you know, if I don't, if a Congo doesn't start and I get cold feet and what I'm going to do there, I don't think Tice is the worst play at four mm -hmm. nine because doesn't he have to get a lot of minutes here? Yeah. I mean, I don't know who's going to rebound the ball for them. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, not that I'm going to be thrilled to click a button for Daniel Tice, but as a last guy in to save money, yeah, to get that's going to get minutes in the 30s. I I think, you know, uh, Grant Williams at three nine. If you think he's going to get dominant minutes off the bench, I guess that's an option yeah. too. But yeah, so it's we're looking at this game from two different angles, and we'll I like see. it. Yeah, I do too. And maybe both sides of that, you know, can be correct in one way or another. All right, you ready for game three? Let's do it. 6.30 game, Chicago Bulls, Milwaukee Bucks. There's that 10.5 spread, just like the last game will be with Pell's Suns. 229.5, so there's your top number on the slate. It's uh, 109.5 implied for Chicago. And then the biggest implied on the whole board, this will make uh, Josh Crash Davis happy, uh, Bucks are 120 implied total. So uh, expecting a lot of points out of them today in the from Vegas. Only news, Matt Thomas out for Chicago. Jordan Noir uh, is probable for Milwaukee. So basically, roll out your best. Let them play the big minutes. See what they've got. Chicago is 17th in pace. 
<clears throat> Milwaukee seventh. Chicago was 23rd defensively. Milwaukee 14th. So it deserves to be the highest uh, total on the board with lesser defenses than in the other games. And then, um, you know, the, the big question here is, do you start with Giannis or do you find a way to get to the, the cheaper stars from Chicago now? Levine, DeRozan, and Vuk's prices are all down. Yeah. So what are you looking at here, Deb? This is the one I think is, is very interesting because there's so many ways you can go. I think it's super interesting. And, and the question is, you know, can – can Chicago do anything different than they've done in the regular season? I mean, they've really gotten beaten up by Milwaukee during the yep. season. They don't seem to match up very well. I mean, no. I feel I feel for Chicago. You know, they make it into the playoffs in their first round. They've got to play against the team that they probably match up the least good against. Right. Um, I'm not, you know, to your point, DeRozan and uh, Vuk's pricing has come way down. Um, yeah. Attractive, you know, six nine for 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 Vuk, uh, crazy. That but is really crazy. I just don't know if they can they can show up in this game. I just think that um, it's been a real struggle, and I'm probably not going to take that chance. It's a real nice contrarian play, but I'm not going to go there. Um, my first look on Chicago's with Levine. Um, he, you know, again, going back to the theory that Milwaukee um, is a little soft against the three, that's his, that's his sweet spot. Um, so I think they, they look to him and to get a lot of offense out of him. Um, he's 7,500 on DK, uh, 7,700 on FanDuel. So, yeah. um, so I like him at the shooting guard position. Um, and uh, the other guy that I'm going to keep in my player pool um, who's starting to get um, big minutes and they need his defense is Patrick Williams. Yeah. 4,700 on DK, 4,500 on FanDuel. Um, I think he'll get, you know, a, a number of those rebounds, touches on the inside. Um, and, and like I said, needing his defense, I think he gets, you know, um, gets minutes in the, in the low thirties and can, can hit that number. Right. Um, on the Bucks side, Giannis, I think is going to be very highly owned. Um, probably rightfully so, but I'm, I'm opting to stay away from him. And I'm looking at uh, Middleton, um, yeah. who's 8,100 on DK, but a juicy 7,100 on FanDuel. Yeah. Um, and he's been known to shine in the playoffs. I just think he's, you know, um, he did not have the best of seasons, um, but, you know, this is a, a big opportunity to shine. And uh, I, I don't, I'm not afraid of uh, the Chicago defense here. So um, I think um, I think he's a very good play here. I mean, I think Drew Holiday you could look at as well. I'm just opting. I, I'm, I'm only going to take one of these three big guys at their salaries, and I'm opting yeah. for uh, for Middleton. Um, but it wouldn't be crazy to do Drew and, and Middleton um, and and not a Levine. I mean, I think that, you know, the Bucks are going to be, you know, that dominant throughout. And, you know, when it comes to the playoffs, you know, um, even with, you know, bigger spreads, the the big players seem to stay in and play those minutes just Correct. because it's it's the playoffs and and you want to make sure that you're uh, you're sealing that victory. Yeah. Um, I think there's also a couple of value plays on Milwaukee. Um, you know, I'm going to say it again. I know you can't stand him, but Lopez, 4,600, you know, he's. <laughs> oh, my God. Hey, congratulations, by the way. Your last pod, you called out Lopez and he, yeah. he broke the yeah. slate. He brought it. He, he, he brought, brought it. it. So, he did. you know, so he's, he's got to um... have some love for him. <laughs> got to have some love. You know, he's got to play in there against Vukovic and Vukovic isn't, um, isn't the best defender. So no. I think it's, um, I think it's still a solid play. Yeah. And then Connaughton, um, you know, almost at the minimum, 3,500 DK, 3,700 on FanDuel. Um, you know, he can produce off the bench. I think, you know, maybe he's the one who benefits from a couple extra minutes if if the game is more on the blowout side. Um, and we only need like low 20s in fantasy points from him to get a win with him. So, um, so I'm definitely looking at him as one of those uh, value guys to slate in. Very nice. Um you know, I'm going to start out this game very simply. I'm going to go to Giannis. I just, I, I have him as the highest raw points guy on the board. There's a lot of value to me in these four games. You wouldn't think there would be with everybody going with, you know, minimal rotation, seven, eight guys. 
I just I see a lot of value that I like in a lot of these games. So I I built a lineup already today with both Giannis and Durant in there. It's easy. It's a lot easier to do on FanDuel than it is on DraftKings, and you can do it on Yahoo as well. I just think you know, like you said, that's a key point. Uh, yes, uh, Coach Bud pulls his guys in fourth quarters. But it's not going to be as fast to pull guys in the playoffs. You know, you see yeah. them play these games to the end, foul at the end, do all the stuff because you know it's the playoffs. It's what you played for all season long. So for that point, I just think Giannis is is such a strong play here. I I don't. It's so hard. You know, if he does get you know 65, 70 fantasy points, you know, is that a breaking the slate kind of thing? Maybe not, but. It's still you got to catch up to 65 or 70 yeah. fantasy points somewhere, you know. So I just feel like he's just too strong to pass up for me. Um, I do like the 7-1 price on Middleton. That's doable, not the 8-1 for me. Um, and after that, I don't know if I want to go with some of the other guys. They're priced a little too high for me. Hall Day at 7-9 is, yeah, you know, it's getting to that point with Caruso defense on him that it just doesn't make me jump at it. And then I get it. Lopez can have great games. Vuk's a bad defender, but I still think Portis will get enough run in there. Sometimes Lopez will sit larger chunks of time if they're playing well, you know, without him on the floor. So probably Giannis or bust for me on the buck side for Chicago though. You know, I'm with you. I think my, one of my better value plays on this slate will be, low owned and that's Patrick Williams. He's only four, seven. Mm -hmm. They brought him back with like three weeks left in the regular season, eased him back in its minutes wise. And he's a key, key player for this team. Yeah. I mean, he just blew right by guys like Giovanni green and Kobe white and Dasun Mu. He's Patrick Williams will start and play big minutes in this series. And he's very important to them specifically defensively, but because of that, he's going to get you some stocks he can score the ball when he's mm -hmm. not guarded toughly. So is toughly a word? I, don't know. <laughs> I know what you meant. It is now. Um, so, you know, I love that value play there too. Uh, I agree with you though. You know, we, we all have attacked and had success attacking the three point line uh, against the Bucks. So Levine and Vuk for those, you know, principles of just hitting threes Vuk takes threes the two of them you know at seven five and seven seven for more of that mid-level build I think are both really good plays too so uh, I'll have exposure here but not again a stack game because personally I think of all the games this one to me I know a lot of people will say Phoenix is going to just blow the Pelicans out of the water I just the Chicago the wheels fell off at the end of the season yeah, yeah. so I think mm -hmm. They're they're thinking, man, this sucks. Like you said, we got to play the Bucks. I just don't think they're going to come in with the right uh, feel here, and I think the Bucks could sweep them. I'm with you there. Yeah. All right. You ready for the final game? Let's do it. My New son. Orleans, the New Orleans Pelicans and Deb's own Phoenix Suns. Here we go. Phoenix by 10 and a half, 224 total, 106.75 implied for the Pels, 117.25 for the Phoenix Suns. The big news is, is Zion going to play? We all saw the windmill dunks and warmups, all the stuff he's been doing. It says on my report here that I'm looking at through Roto-Wire that he is very likely to play. That's crazy. I'm not going to play him. I'm sure it's going to be in a limited role if he plays at all. Again, it could be a ploy to get Phoenix to have to adjust. But, you know, what if he plays 15, 18 minutes? It's going to change that whole rotation and usage for the Pelicans. So this is the, the hardest one. This is a head scratcher because I don't know if he's going to have no impact, a little impact, enough to – shake up the board here. That's what we got to figure out for Phoenix. Shamit is questionable, which matters because he does get some minutes off the bench for them. And then uh, we know Sarge has been out. He's been out all year. So how much stock do you put in the Zion news? And, you know, does this game stay close enough or is this a Phoenix smash and grab? Yeah. Um, 
I know I struggle with this a little bit. I mean, <clears throat> Pelican showed a lot of heart on Friday. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, I listened to Ingram after the, uh, the game, the post game and uh, boy, is he on a mission? I think, um, you know, um, the Zion thing I think is a, is a big distraction. I don't think it'll, it'll, it'll change things that much for, for Phoenix. I don't think he plays that many minutes, certainly not in the first game. Right. Um, but, um, but I think it could fire up the Pelicans, right. Make them feel like, Hey, you know what? We could be stronger than we've ever been all season. We've been yep. coming on. We've been playing great after the trade. So, um, so I don't, I don't think it's a total blowout. I think that, um, I think the Pelicans have enough offensive options. Um, I think that, uh, this game, I actually think it, it could exceed the 224 total though. Um, okay. I do think there's a chance that this is a highly offensive game. Um, so I, uh, I definitely like some players here, given that, given the fact that it's offensively minded, um, and, uh, you know, it's always tough with uh, McCollum versus Ingram. We've talked about how they potentially cancel each other out. You know, this yeah. last game, Ingram um, was the star. McCollum took a backseat the game before it was McCollum. So you really have to pick the right guy. Yeah. Um, but I do think that given each of their pricing, I think that one of them has a, has a shot to, to, to uh, exceed value on their pricing. I'm leaning okay. towards Ingram tonight um given that recent performance given the sort of that that mindset that he seemed to have um he's only 7800 on dk so real attractive at that sub eight price and then 8200 on FanDuel. so i'm going to give a lean towards him versus mccullum i'm not going to fall into the larry man larry nance or trey murphy traps both are coming off their big game and i yeah. did i did i was able to cash by picking I nance see. last game 0.9 percent ownership so I was you pretty are, psyched that was that. an incredible call, Larry. I was, <laughs> I was psyched about that. Yeah. And, uh, I'll look for another one today for sure. But, uh, but this is a different, different game entirely. I don't see that happening again. So I'm not going after those guys. Yeah. Um, and you know, um, some of these other value plays, you know, the Herb Jones or the, or the, uh, you know, Alvarado's, um, you know, it, playing against the Suns, I just, I just don't trust them. Um, yeah. Um, you know, Valencianis, I don't know what happened to him last game, you know, and they just, they decided they didn't need him. Um, uh, they'll need him tonight. They'll need him against Aiton. So, you know, he's an option to go to potentially, but I, uh, you know, I think there's other, other center plays, um, to go after. So I'm really just focused on, in, on, uh, you know, on Ingram on the, on the Pelican side and I'm not going Zion. <laughs> Although what's Zion priced at? I didn't even check Zion's pricing. <laughs> um, you no, know, that is a great question. I I can look that up. Uh, you go ahead and go over your going. sons, and I'll find out the yeah. Zion pricing here. Um, you know, on the other side, um, the Suns are healthy. They play a, a a great team game, but when they are healthy, particularly with CP3, he's the floor general. Um, he's going to be involved in a lot of the plays. Um, he's attractively priced at 7,600 on DK, a little pricier on FanDuel at 8,600. So yeah. in particular, I like him on DK. Um, I think the ball is going to be in his hands a lot. I think he'll, um, you know, because I don't think this will blow out necessarily. I think he'll get a good amount of minutes. You know, I see him getting, you know, 15 plus assists tonight. And, um, I, uh, I like him a lot. Um, I also like Booker, um, you know, Booker is a little pricey at nine K, but yeah. he's been in a groove. Um, there's nothing to fear about the Pelicans backcourt defense. Right. Um, and he could, he could shoot lights out. I mean, this could be, you know, one of his, you know, 40 point game nights. And, uh, right. so I'm, uh, I'm high on him as well. And then I think there's some value plays, uh, in particular, I'm eyeing Crowder at 4,200 on both sites. Um, he's, he's a veteran again. He, uh, you know, took a little bit of a, a, a step back, um, during the season, he dealt with some injuries, but I think he puts in his all during the playoffs. Um, and I think he, uh, um, I think he hits that value pretty, uh, pretty easily. Yep. That is it. That's it. I love that call on Crowder too. So a couple of the, you know, just like uh, we did with Patrick Williams, I feel the same way about Crowder. I think he's just 
too cheap. He's going to yeah. get big, big minutes. Two minutes. And he's been there and done that before and runs in the playoffs. So I love that call, by the way. A um, couple of things on Zion. This is very, very interesting. He's 7,200 on um, DraftKings, center eligible only. Huh. How weird is that? Yeah. And then on FanDuel, Zion is power forward only eligible at 8,700. Really? And then on Yahoo, it's even funnier. He is power forward only eligible at the min 10 bucks. Whoa. <laughs> so throw I've, that I've, got, the, I've got, got the GPP on Yahoo today, right? So uh... you do. Zion's <laughs> going to be part of that. No Zion's doubt. Zion's got to be in there, right? Wow. Wow. Isn't that crazy, though? That's, that's wild. Nobody, nobody saw this coming. And again, we may, you know, and we may not know. This may, may not be know. something right. they wait until right. the very end. It's the late game. And he, he may be sitting there in, in uh, street clothes. Who knows? You know, <laughs> crazy. That is the wild card thing of the day. Awesome. But a couple of things I forgot to, to mention the numbers on, on this game as far as pace is 21 for Pels, ninth for the Suns. Defense, Pels, not that good. 20, but improved at the end of the year. Third for Phoenix, as we know. So wanted to make sure and cover that. The other thing about Crowder, he was in the top 10 DRPM as well in the whole league. Nice. So nice. his value, you know, is way more than it shows in the stats lines, but being the playoffs, they're going to want him out there for defensive reasons, et cetera. So I'm with you on that. I, a couple of things for me here, you know, just the fact that McCullum and Ingram and Joe Val are all going to get, you know, usage. And then you add even a 10 minute Zion in there, whatever. I just not real comfortable with paying big bucks for any of the pills. And I could be dead wrong, but I really respect Phoenix's defense. If I'm going to play anybody, I'd go ch real cheap here with a Jackson Hayes or Herb Jones, somebody like that, but not going to focus on the pill side. I don't want to spend those dollars uh unnecessarily because i've got to find value because i'm paying up in other spots yeah. plus i'll say this i think mccullum gets chris paul defense and in the playoffs that can be tough and i think ingram's going to get mikhail bridges defense mm -hmm. which is underrated that dude can de yes. defend so you know again those are a couple of reasons why i'm going to steer from the pills as far as the suns you know i don't know if i want to pay up for a booker i love him 9k though i don't know if i can chew that that's a lot um i probably would want to save the bucks and go to paul at seven six um but we'll see if that's going to fit for me um i think bridges plays a lot because they need him defensively and he does log big big minutes for them this year and he's only five two and crowder's four two so you can find some really good bargains and values throughout this entire slate um, Aiton, I'm just, I never trust him. I just don't think he plays enough minutes all the time. They mess around with that rotation. If you do think the game's going to get out of hand for Phoenix, you know, Cam Johnson, Cameron Payne, uh, mm -hmm. and maybe mm -hmm. even JaVale McGee, if you mm -hmm. really want to throw some GPP darts out there, those guys are not bad, uh, plays. Cause if they get 25 minutes with hardly any ownership, all 5k and, and lower, uh, they can make sense too. So this is going to be a wild day, Deb. It's going to be awesome. I love basketball all day. It is fantastic. What an Easter gift for all of us. No <laughs> doubt about it. Um, on prize picks, you know, I, I will say, let me, I'm going to look up on prize picks right now, what I've given out. And we'll give these out online here on our podcast, and then we'll add some things uh, for uh, in Discord for our members. The, what I have listed right now is I have Jimmy Butler over 33 and a half PRA. And his price is a little difficult for me in that game as far as DFS wise, but I just think it's playoffs. You talk about a guy that just coasts a lot and sits yeah. out games. He gives it in the playoffs. So yeah. I like him. I do, like I say, I, I would love to play Booker, but at that price tag of 9K plus, I, it's hard. But I do like him in prize picks 
That's the beauty of prize picks. You know, you don't have to force a guy in in DFS where you can't fit their salary, but you just play him right up on on prize picks. He's yeah. 27 and a half real points. I like the over. I, like you said, I, you know, he can score the ball. I think that if they get a, a big lead, a lot of it's going to be him and the defensive matchups and everything. I think Booker really fills it up. And then again, I'm leaning towards Paul. I like him at 14 and a half uh, real points uh, for Chris Paul. I think the number's too low. Yeah. And those little mid range jumpers, man, and down the stretch where he forces himself to get fouled. I think he can find a way to to get over that number pretty easily. So those I are, like his I like his assist number too, the eleven and a half assists. Yeah, I think that's very very good number too, eleven and a half. I looked at that. I was trying to decide between assists and points, and they're both really pretty good, to be yeah. honest with you, no doubt. Some good plays right. on prospects. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. Great to have you back. I love that beautiful background there. Awesome. That's really cool too. <laughs> thank um, you. Awesome to be back. Yes, we, we missed you. Glad you had a great trip. Again, happy Easter to you and your family. Hope you guys have a great day. And uh, we're going to get this posted so uh, we get some people checking it out before uh, lock. So let's do it. Thank you, Deb. Have Alrighty. a great day. Happy Everybody Easter, else. Coach. Yeah, you bet. And uh, thanks to Prize Picks again, the presenting sponsor. You can sign up there, dollar for dollar match on that first 100 by using the promo code Coach Talk at prizepicks.com. We would love to have you, dfscoachtalk.com, even for just dip your toes in the water, 10 bucks. So it's a chocolate bunny. That's it. A, a big <laughs> chocolate. Well, my chocolate bunnies are 10 bucks. Big They're ones. Big. They're big ones. And uh, I, I may have already eaten one. I'm just saying it's possible. <laughs> but uh, yeah, just try us out. We'd love to have you. We have a great community. Uh, a big mm-hmm. shout out to, again, to uh, have faith. A uh, big takedown winner last night from the Coach Tag family, uh, 14, 15K, awesome ROI. That's what we love to see, flying That's that awesome. Coach, Tag, uh, Coach Talk badge. So congratulations, have faith. Hope we have a bunch more of them today. All right. Thank you so much for listening in. Enjoy the rest of your Easter. Enjoy the NBA basketball today. And we'll certainly be back again tomorrow when we look to crush it in NBA, DFS, and prize picks.